Hi there and welcome back. It's Lisa from Craters and Ink in Ontario, Canada. Today I'm going to do my paper pumpkin for the month of September. And it's a really cute paper pumpkin. It's uh, Halloween. So before I get started, uh, I've already actually done the little treat boxes and I'll show you those in a second. I'm, I'm having super awful issues with technology. Technology is not my friend today. And um, I had the whole video done and realized that I had a whopping 32 seconds, if that, of uh, recording. So I'm going to redo it and I've come up with a couple of alternatives that are in the flyer um, that I worked on as I got past my frustration. So without further ado, this is the box that it comes in and it's wrapped in a beautiful uh, coordinating black tissue paper and typically the tissue paper matches whatever the theme is for that particular month. So um, also in your box you will find uh, usually a preview for next month's paper pumpkin. So the next two months, October and November, are going to be Christmas. Next month is going to be cards and it's called the season to be jolly. So you have till the 10th of October is the last ordering day for Paper Pumpkin. And then they start to process and ship on the 11th, you know, providing it's not a weekend. And then on the other side of this little flyer, it just gives you kind of an idea of what Paper Pumpkin is all about. And if you have questions, you can go to paperpumpkin.com or you can give me a quick um, email <coughs> at critterisandink at gmail.com and I'm more than happy to... Um, you know just spec it out for you okay so that's that and then in your kit I'm just going to go through in your, what comes with the kit I've already dismantled it so but I'll show you you have your instruction sheet and it shows you that you have enough to make six little treat boxes three of or six sorry not six 18 18 little treat boxes, six of three different designs. So we're going to put one of each together. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a couple of alternatives that I worked on. And your instructions are fully um, in color and there's a, a ruler down across the bottom so that you know if you have to measure out ribbon or string or just measure your cardstock, everything is there. And then on the back it kind of gives you a little sort of preview of what should be in your box and then we're going to do these two um, or I'm going to show you these two alternatives uh, at the end all right so why don't we get started uh, in your box you will get six each of three different colors of box so you're going to get an orange white and black and you're going to get six of each and then you're also going to get six each of the belly bands that goes over the, covers the box. So you have the um, the white one goes with the orange. The fresh freesia goes with the white, and then the plaid one goes with the black. So we're going to put those together. And then you also have two sheets of little stars. Where's my other little sheet of stars here? Oh, here it is. So you get two little sheets of stars. One, one set of stars is a little bigger than the other. And then a sheet of punch outs of little ghosts and spiders. Mine all fell apart here because I was playing with it. And then you get a sheet of mini glue dots and some little sentiment strips, uh, little punch outs for your sentiments. And then some. These are also for sentiments, these little circles, and then some little spider webs. And of course you get your stamps. Let me see if I can put this on the back of here. So you have, enjoy this spooky treat, trick or treat, a little spider, a little ghost, some bats, spider webs, some stars, and happy Halloween. So cute. And you also get a mini Stampin' Spot of Orchid Oasis. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to use my big Orchid Oasis just because um, that's what I like to use. And then if this is your first paper pumpkin, 
you will receive also a block in your box but you only get a block in your first paper pumpkin from your subscription okay let's get started I'm gonna push some of this stuff out of the way now putting the boxes together is really really easy once you've done one you'll think oh yeah when I first looked at it it was like yep I don't know about that <laughs> So the first thing you're going to do, you can see it's all pre-scored for you. So really that's so easy. All you have to do is now fold on all of the score lines. So you're just going to score and then these little tabs come back towards you like this. And then fold. And then these are your little side tabs. So you're going to fold up your two sides like this. And then the little short side comes over these two tabs like this and you just push it down and it holds those two sides together and then finally you take the longer side and you bring that right over push it down and then that longer tab becomes the base of your card base of your um, little box so we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the white one So again, the sides are going to come up in between the two, the two tabs, like this. And then the shorter of the end ones comes over and tucks in. And then the longer one is your final one, and that snaps right down into the bottom and becomes the base of your box. Okay, so let's do the orange one and get that one done. You could use your bone folder. My bone folder is on my other table, so I'm just gonna, I don't really need it. Oh, thank you. I'm stamping with my friend Doreen today. So, gonna pull that over like that, and then our little tabs on the sides. And there, that's all. So we'll push these tabs in and go down on the sides, down on the sides. The short one goes over the side tabs and catches. And then this goes over, the tall, long one goes over and becomes the base of the box. Okay, super simple. All right, so where are my instructions? So let's start with the first one, is the orange one. So we're going to take a we need a white belly band. And what else do we need? We need a spider. And uh, let's see, we need a purple little tab here. So whenever you buy these kits, they're all inclusive. And you, as I said, you get the uh, block with your first one and all of the stamps are designed to fit on that particular block. So the first thing I want to do is stamp Happy Halloween. So when you have a long stamp, the best way to load it onto your mat is to just let it fall naturally and then pick it up with your block. If you try to place it on your block, it will actually probably wiggle and be not straight. Also, these are photopolymer, you can see through them. So you do need to have something sort of squishy underneath it, whether you're using a vinyl place mat or stamp and pierce mat, or you can get like a silicone mat here. Um, and these are great, nothing sticks to it. So you can stamp on it, get ink on it, get glue on it and just wash it, it all comes right off. But you need something with a little bit of give, thanks, to just to give this stamp some leeway to press on. Not like the red rubber stamps that have the, the spongy part is already built in, right? These don't have that. So I'm gonna take my little uh, Fresh Freesia banner for the sentiment. Because these are new, I just wanna test it. Yeah, uh, you can see I got ink all over mine. I'm gonna to have to wipe it first. Mm -hmm. Hey, I had a paper towel here. I just brought one. I needed it. Oh, did you? 
Thank you. There, let me try that again. You don't want to be getting ink all over your stay all over your block because trust me it will transfer so i'm just going to stamp that right on the fresh freesia banner there beautiful and then this is going to get glued on with our glue our little um, glue dots now if you have liquid glue and you prefer to use that you know what by all means go right ahead um, and use that. I am a liquid glue girl myself, but um, you know, these these little glue dots work just great. So I'm just going to pull the backing off them. Oops. I better put one in the middle because I put my glue dots right at the very end and I probably shouldn't have. There. All right. Okay. So now we're going to decorate our um, belly band and again I'm just going to put some glue dots onto where am I going to put this about here so I think I'm actually going to put my glue dots onto here because I don't want the glue dots going into the holes because then it'll stick to whatever we put in the box So I'm using my grid paper to, to make sure that I'm somewhat straight. And I'll just pop one right kind of in the middle there. Okay, I'm just going to lift off the backing. And plop that right on there. All right, where is my spider? There we are. So my little spider, I'm going to slide him under my purple Fresh Freesia little banner there. Like that. And I'm just gonna pop a glue dot under his head. Or under one of his feet. Well, where am I going to put that? I think I'll put the glue dot right there. It says to put a dimensional in the instructions, but I think if you were to put a dimensional here, it would stick out and catch on all kinds of things. So there we have that. So now I'm going to put this together, and I'm going to use my tear and tape. And you get a roll of tear and tape in your kit. So on the side where there's two um, score lines, I'm going to put the glue just along the <clears throat> score line here on the outside side of the scoring line. All right, I'm just gonna fold this before I stick it down. Okay, let's pop off the backing from the tear and tape. And I'm just going to pop that together. And then this is going to slide right on our box. There, isn't that so stinking cute? Oh my God. All right, so we're gonna put some stars on it. And the description has three stars, so let's do that. We'll put one here, one over here, 
and then another one up here. Oh, you know, you want to stay there? Stay there. It's fine. And then we can put some little treats in our treat boxes. Have some little Reese's pieces in here. Just pop those right in there. That's so cute. Okay. So the next one is our um, black one with the plaid um, belly band. So let's grab our plaid belly band. And we're going to decorate the belly band. I'm going to do the folds because last time I did this one, I actually missed the second fold and I was decorating on the wrong side of the of the belly band. So if I have it all folded in, this is my work area that I want to be able to um, decorate. So I'm going to lay it down here and I need a spider web and a ghost. So we're going to put a few glue dots on our spider web just on the back here all right so well, let's see, let's put them about there. And then our ghost is going to go up on dimensionals. So we have our mini dimensionals. I don't know if I mentioned earlier that they actually come in the package. Everything you need comes included in your package. All right, so let's pop the dimensional backings off. There we are. So there's our little ghost and we need a sentiment. So I'm going to take one of our little white pop outs here. And uh, let's see, enjoy this spooky treat. So let me clean this one off and put it away. All right, so I've got it upside down and I'm going to pick it up. And I'm just gonna center that right on this little square. Perfect. All right, now I want this to sit like this. So I'm only going to put dimensionals on this side. So I'm gonna flip it towards me. I got ink everywhere. And I'm just gonna put a couple of dimensionals just right on this side. Because if I put dimensionals on this side, it's gonna to be too high on the already raised up ghost. So we don't want that. Okay, so I got three of those. I could probably throw a glue dot on the one end. Actually, maybe I'll do that. It doesn't say to do that in instructions, but it's not going to hurt anything. Okie doke. So there we have that. And then now we just need some little stars. This is the cutest kit. Oh my goodness. Love it. So I'm going to put one up here. I'll take a little one. We'll put a little one. Over here. Pop another little one down here. So cute. Okay. 
So now we're going to take our tear and tape and we need to put it on this um, tab here. So let me just going to go on our black box that we built earlier. So cute. And there we are. So there's two boxes. And now our third box is the white one with the Fresh Freesia belly band. So here's our belly band and I'm going to fold all of my score lines. So let's flip this over so we can see what we're doing. So this time we're going to stamp some little bats and trick or treat on the little circle and then we're going to back it with this Halloween DSP designer series paper. So let's pop out one of our little designer papers here. And our circles. Okay, so I'm just going to clean this. We need our bats now. All right. Oh, and we need also the trick or treat. So let's do the bats first. So cute. And I guess I'll have them going this way over here. All right. Okay, and I need my trick or treat. Okay, I'm just going to pop that right in the center of the circle. All right. So on the banner, I'm going to put, if you look at the diagram, it tells you that you need to put six glue dots on the banner part and four uh, dimensionals on the circle part. Thank you. <laughs> yes, move the ink. So let's see, we'll pop six of these on here, alrighty, okay, so I'm going to center that right in here, is that centered, yep, pretty good, and then we'll put some dimensionals on this little circle. These seem like really sticky dimensionals. So you can see how quick and easy these treat boxes are. If you live in a neighborhood where you get just a few kids, this is ideal. Sometimes um, you can order replacement kits for the paper pumpkins. You don't receive the stamps or the ink, just the paper elements. So um, now is a good time to keep an eye out to see if they're going to be available. They'll be on the website. Um, usually they are available. Very rarely do they sell out within the first week. So there's our front of our belly band. And now I'm just going to pop on my tear and tape. And 
and there's our white metal box. Beautiful. So there's our three little treat boxes with our candies in there. I only put candy in one, but you get it. And um, yeah, they're so cute. So I did work on some alternatives this afternoon. And one of them was this little, uh, like a gift card, I guess, if you wanted to put like a gift card for, you know, the dollar store or something, just put that in there. And I just used a piece of uh, fresh freesia that is three and a quarter by five and a half. And I scored it at two and three quarters. And then I took the white belly band. And uh, where's my white belly band? And I just cut it right on the score lines uh, to fit onto this little card. So if, you know, treat boxes aren't your bag, you can always make just little cards. And I just used a little spider and some dimensionals. But isn't that sweet? And then I put a couple of stars and I stamped some stars underneath. And um, I just thought, oh my goodness, that is just stinking cute. So that's one little alternative that you can do. And then here's another alternative that I did. And I did it on a uh, gorgeous grape background. And I'm going to show you how I did this uh, element here. It's pretty cute. <clears throat> so I, what I did was I took a piece of vellum. Now I've already gone ahead and stamped it with Versamark and used white embossing powder to create these uh, little ghosts. And this piece of vellum is four by five and a quarter. And then to create the colored element on the back, I'm going to take a big block. You can use, you can use anything. You can use like the little silicone mat if you want to. Uh, really, you can use whatever you like. So I'm using refills, ink refills but you can use your stamping pads too like you can take your stamping pad and just press the ink onto your stamping pad and use that for this one i am going to be using my uh, re-inkers because i have them i might as well use them so i'm just going to put a drop of this one is pale papaya it's like a peachy little color and that's way more than i need to be honest with you and I'm going to just spray some alcohol that you get at the dollar store, at the drugstore, just to make like a little um, translucent color. Oh, thanks. Yeah, because I'm looking right at it. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm taking one of my water blenders. There's water in it, but I'm only going to, I'm just using alcohol and ink right now. So I'm just going to make, ooh, that's powerful alcohol. Yikes. So I'm just going to make a little peachy um, kind of a wash really and I'm just going to wash the inside of my ghosts with this peachy color. Yeah you know what I will stick that under thanks. Can I get you to grab me a piece of paper towel please? Do you know where they are? Oh right. Oh, I did bring one. Okay I tell you I'm losing my marbles and it's a short trip to lost Marbleville. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just using the pale papaya and I'm just going to fill in uh, the ghosties with this pale papaya color. Now don't worry if you get it over the white part because it's not going to saturate the white. It's just going to float there and you can wipe it off once the um, pale papaya. I'm trying to get alcohol here so that they're more translucent. Um, you can just wipe it right off. It's like kind of a resist. It won't, it won't absorb any color. alcohol there and this dries fairly quickly you don't have to worry too much about it but you can see how it just bounces right off maybe I'll zoom in a little bit I'm terrible for zooming in and then I forget that I've zoomed and I don't zoom out <laughs> so hopefully I'll 
to remember. So there's our ghosties. So I'm going to let that dry for just half a second and I'm going to clean my brush. And I have water in here. So you can just squeeze the water and it will clean your brush. There, you can see now my brush is nice and clean. And I'm just going to wipe up the pale papaya here. Oh, that's where that ink came from. Look at that from before. I have ink everywhere, honestly. And so now I'm going to take some of the fresh freesia and what other color will I put on there? A little fresh freesia. And I want some pink. I'm going to grab, I think, petal pink. I tried it before with the polished pink and I, I just found that it was too dark. Well, not too dark, I guess, but darker, like it's very, it's very pink. And I kind of thought I would like a lighter color. So here's petal pink. It's one of the subtles. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of drops of the petal pink on the block and I'm going to give it a spray with alcohol. Sorry, it's going to choke you out there. Okay. There. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to bring in the alcohol and really give it a good stir. I don't want a ton of color, but I do want color. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it in. So these water painters are available um, at Stampin' Up. You get a package of three, and there's three different sizes in the box. There, so I've gotten rid of all my color. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to put a bunch of alcohol on my block. Whew, stinky. And I'm just gonna pick up the alcohol with my brush and I'm going to tap it over my um, ink. And I'm hoping to get kind of a watercolor uh, effect. Yeah, it's working. Nice. let it dry for a couple of minutes oh there we go that was the effect that I wanted I'm being too light-handed with the alcohol oh yeah that's way better so you can see how the alcohol is pushing the ink away a little bit I don't know if you can really see that let's put this behind it so you're getting like little circly things of alcohol. So I'm just going to pick up the ink that's on the white embossing powder and it will just disappear. Now one thing you don't want to do is leave the alcohol on there for too long because I don't know what it'll do to the embossing. Maybe nothing, but why take that chance? I actually don't know. Thanks. I actually think I could use a little more color on there, don't you? A little better, maybe? Mm. But you'll take away your water spots. I'll put more. <laughs> there. I thought the other one was too dark, and now I'm finding this one's almost not dark enough. Okay, let's let that dry for a sec. Actually, I'm just going to take my spray bottle and give it a little... Let's just see. 
Oh yeah, now we're cooking. Yeah, much better. So I didn't push the plunger all the way down. I just kind of gave it a little, just squish, tiny little squish. So we'll see what happens when that dries. I'm just gonna clean this up before I get it all over everything. Because I've had a very inky day. <laughs> there. Okie doke. So we'll get rid of that. See, inky, inky, inky. All right. We're gonna let that dry for just a moment, actually. I'm gonna take this back and just wipe this up. So it's a little messy, and yes, you have to wait for it to dry, but isn't it cute? Oh, love it. All right, I'm gonna let it dry for a few minutes. Now over here, I have a piece of basic white. That is four by five and a quarter. Let me grab my gorgeous grape background. All right, so I've got my gorgeous grape cardstock, and I'm going to make, I'm going to zoom out here, and I'm just going to make a card base with my gorgeous grape. Let that dry for a sec. So I've got a piece of eight and a half by 11. I'm going to load it up at quarter, four and a quarter. You can tell I'm getting tired. I was going to say quarter quarter after four, <laughs> four and a quarter, and just score it. Now I'm gonna rotate it one turn and cut it at five and a half, and that will give me two card bases that are eight and a half by five and a half, and I've scored them at four and a quarter, and that'll give me two cards. So we only need one right now. So let's see. So there's my one card base. And what I'm going to do is, this is fairly dry. Maybe I'll just let it dry for another few seconds. And I need a piece of black linen thread. Uh, and I'm gonna take a piece of tear and tape. Oops. And um, now typically you wouldn't put glue behind vellum because you can see it. But I, I didn't really notice it very badly when I was, when I did my other card. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a, a strip of tear and tape up uh, both sides and across the top and bottom of this. And I don't know if you can hear Roxy. She's at my feet. I think she thinks it's dinner time, and I, it isn't. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pop that on there. Now, I did this on vellum, but you could try and do it on um, water color paper or just plain basic white. Uh, you know, totally up to you. Experiment. You know, you could do a color wash. You could do all kinds of things. Do your embossing first, though, so that you can have an emboss resist. And that means that when you do do coloring, whether you're using blending brushes or, you know, um, anything like that, that you can then take a, some kind of a, a cloth or a paper towel and wipe the ink off of the embossed part so that it's still nice and shiny and beautiful. So this is cut the same size as the white here. So I'm going to just very carefully start at one corner and I'm just going to work my way up to this other corner because I want them to be the same. Now this was a little bit wrinkled because of all the moisture. So I've got that on there. And I do have to trim just a smidgen off because of the wrinkling, but you know what? That's okay. I'm just going to run my scissors carefully along this edge. And maybe a little bit across the top here. Didn't land perfectly, but 
uh, that doesn't bother me. When things are handmade, handcrafted, you know, there's room for a little bit of creativeness because we're not robots, we're just people. And it's made with love. So if it's a little bit off on the edge, that's okay. It's not life or death. First thing I want to do now is I'm going to just put a little bit of tear and tape um, on the back of this side just a little bit to hold my linen thread when I'm tying my bow so that it's not going all over the place and I'm just putting down about a piece that's maybe three quarters of an inch um, just to hold it in place so that it isn't getting all squirrely on me okay so I'm just going to press that down and pop off my backing paper all right so because there's glue on this I'm going to put my silicone sheet down so that if I put this on here it's not going to stick obviously if I have tear and tape on the back and put it on my paper it's going to stick and I don't want it to so that's um, it's why a silicone sheet is a, an extremely good investment so let me just I don't really need all that much so let me come to here that looks pretty good all right so I'm going to tie I'm going to do a double knot here just so that it doesn't um, get too loose on me when I'm trying to do my my bow because if you're not see that's a little bit loose for my liking there I tightened it okay so now I'm just going to tie a bow beautiful all right so there's my bow just make sure it's straight press it into the tear and tape and now I'm just going to put some more tear and tape on the back of this you could use glue dots or liquid glue whatever you have that you like Oops, stick them to me. I think liquid glue for me is my go-to glue, but I'm quite happy to use whatever I have at hand so that I can get the job done. But if I had my druthers, it would be the liquid glue. So if you don't know what the liquid glue is, can you just hand me that? It is the, what we use is the Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue. And it's, it's beautiful glue and it stays um, liquid long enough for you to adjust your paper if you have to, but when it's down, it's stuck forever. All right, so I'm gonna pop this onto my gorgeous grape cardstock. I'm just centering it, centering it on the front of the cardstock. Ah, so cute. All right. So now I'm going to take a piece of black scrap cardstock. This is a piece that I had left over from um, when I made this card. And you know what? The size doesn't matter. You can adjust it later if you have... I never throw up my little strips like this when I'm um, creating. Just put them in an envelope and keep them because sometimes all you need is a little piece like this and to finish your card. Okay, so I'm going to take a, the, a piece of this glitter tape and it comes in a package of four. It's in the July to December uh, mini holiday catalog and they're gorgeous. I did purple on the other one. What should I do on this one? Copper maybe? Mm. Oh yeah, let's do copper. So I'm going to do copper on this one. If I can find the end. <laughs> Maybe not. Yep, nope, there it is. Okay, so I'm just going to take a piece of this copper 
um, tape. And I'm just going to pop it on there. So pretty. That looks nice. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm going to take my um, stamp that we used before that says enjoy this spooky treat. So let me clean my trick or treat here. I'm going to swap it out for enjoy this spooky treat. Yeah, I had a little piece of scrap white earlier. What did I do with that? Oh, thanks. Doreen had a little piece of scrap here. So I'm just going to use that. All I want is the word spooky, which is the middle word, and I'm going to fussy cut it out. So I'm going to stamp the whole thing on just a scrap. And it doesn't matter that the top and bottom words aren't getting perfect because I'm going to cut them off anyways. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry for half a second. And now I'm going to fussy cut those out. Thank you. So fussy cutting just means that you're cutting around. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're cutting around. And you know what? If it's not perfect, it's okay. Oh, you notice my scissors are moving, but my paper, I mean, my paper is moving, but my scissors are not. Let the paper do the work. And that way you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can keep an eye on where your blade is going. And I don't worry too much if my margins aren't exact. You know what? It's only paper. There's my word spooky. Very good. And I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. It's a little bit long, so I'm going to cut the end off. But let's... Oh, thanks. It's been a long, frustrating day for my, oh, I'm going to cut these in half, I think, for my technology just giving me the gears today and yesterday too. When I, I posted another video yesterday and when I tried to put my list of what I used onto it, uh, for some reason they would just keep disappearing. And uh, I piddled with that for about three hours. And finally, I just said the heck with it, went up and had dinner. And then someone said to me, are you using a Mac or a PC? And I said, a Mac. And they said, oh, try it on PC. Well, guess what? It worked. So I think from now on, when I do that, I'll just do it on my PC. There. Thanks. That worked. All right. So I'm going to pop that on here. Oh, you know what I forgot? My little purple thing. Okay. I need one of those little purple strips. I knew I was forgetting something, but I couldn't figure out why doesn't it look right. Yeah, so I'm going to put some glue dots on that and just plunk that right down on there. All right, so I'm going to cut this one on an angle. I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter and pop this spooky right there. All right, and I'm gonna just put a couple more glue dots on the back of this. I could use dimensionals, but sometimes if you have too many dimensionals, too much volume in your cards, the post office gets a little finicky and they just send it back and make you put two stamps instead of one. It's already like darn near, how much is it to mail a letter, a dollar or something? About a dollar per stamp right now. All right, so I'm gonna pop this onto here. That's so cute. And I'm going to put some stars on that. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy. 
I think it's time for a glass of wine, maybe. <laughs> All right. Yes, I agree, Roxy. My cat's here giving me the gears. She wants dinner. I think it's wine time. <laughs> All right. And there we have that. So that's another alternative, um, you know, that you can do with the stamps that come with. And there's also, uh, you, you know what, you could do the same card, but with the uh, spider webs or, yeah, the spider web and some spiders. That would be really cute. Yeah, so there's all kinds of alternatives. You know what, just think outside the box. And if you're still not completely like, this is a great idea, just hop onto Pinterest or the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club. There's always some fabulous ideas on there. So, yeah, check it out. So I'm just going to show you again our boxes that we made today. So we have our three treat boxes that we did. And our little gift card. And then our greeting card. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate you spending time with me and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.